Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. What the ball? Chris Taylor. What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Matt Moreno. Matt, we may be in a lockout, but hey, the Dodgers making moves, signing a few players we are going to get to here. But the biggest name, I mean, again, lower expectations here, but Sam Gaviglio, a 31-year-old right-handed pitcher, signs a minor league deal with an invite to spring training. If you are uh, clamoring for starting pitching depth, Gaviglio is a guy that you might be pleased to learn about. Uh, he was an Oregon State Beaver, fifth-round pick in 2011, pitched in the KBO last season. But across his MLB career, basically as a swing pitcher for the Mariners, Royals, and Blue Jays, he's made 98 appearances, 37 of them starts with an ERA of 4.88. I mean, I know we're desperate for content, Matt, here, but, I mean, does, does this move excite you at all, adding a little upper AAA depth maybe? No, I mean, honestly, all it is is par for the course with the Dodgers. And if you even remove the lockout situation, this is a signing that they would probably have done in any other offseason anyway. They look to obviously fill out, like you just said, organizational depth at the AAA level. Gaviglio is somebody who I think, you know, kind of with some of their other signings, Eddie Alvarez and others earlier in the offseason, wouldn't shock me if at some point he's up during the yeah. year just because either – Injuries or the Dodgers are a team that likes to rotate players on and off the active roster pretty much every day, it feels yeah. like. So, you know, it's maybe, like you said, fifth round pick. Maybe they can tap into something and get him to be a little bit more productive than what he's shown uh, so far and kind of, you know, relatively small sample size. Yeah, my initial hope was like, hey, guy who spends a year in a KBO, you know, we've seen guys go to Asia, come back after a year or two and have some success. Eric Thames, Mike Nicholas to be a couple of examples. The, the difference here is Gaviglia wasn't any good in Korea. His ERA there was not any better than his major league ERA. And so, yeah, I mean, I think this is a depth piece. I, I look at guys like this, like, yeah, he could be up. And if he ever did make the major league roster at some point, he'd also be a guy they would probably have no issues outrighting then, you know, onto waivers and potentially yeah. getting back. So nothing more than a depth signing. But, hey, I mean, there's basically no risk with a move like this. He has some major league experience. So you get a spring training arm at the very least. The other bit of news, which is kind of, I would say, maybe a little bit more exciting, is some international news. The Dodgers breaking more barriers, as they are known to do. They signed the first two Ugandan-born professional base play baseball players in Major League Baseball. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce their names. There's very little information on these guys other than some tweets that went out. But they also signed a coach who has signed to join the club at Campos Los, pa Las Palmas the upcoming season. He is the first Ugandan-born coach in Major League Baseball as well. So some exciting news for, for a Dodgers organization. Again, that speaking of par for the course, breaking barriers and being the first to sign players like this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, the Dodgers kind of MO, obviously, if you go back decades to really tap into the international market, like you said, break barriers and be uh, pioneers in this kind of sense. Yeah. And so it's good to see them give a couple of young kids and a coach also, you know, a chance at playing professional baseball. And we'll have to uh, obviously keep an eye on them for like all the other international prospects that are yeah. signing at 16, 17, 18 years old. We'll have to check back in you know, maybe four or five years from now to see where they where they've developed. Yeah, the international signing period is always fascinating to me just to look at the scope, you know, like I'm just thinking like who are the scouts that they've got in Uganda that are watching these guys like they're signing dudes from countries all over the map. Uh, I think they signed someone from Russia. I mean, like it's it's literally everywhere. And yeah. so it's fun to, to to talk about, fun to watch. And, and again, I talked with Justin Lorber about this um, in one of our conversations. When you look at the Dodgers' top prospects, a lot of them come for the international free agency pool. I think it was five of the top ten. So I'm not saying these two guys, I'm not saying this coach are the future of the organization. But it's fun for the breaking barriers piece. And also, you never know with stuff like this. So let us know what you think below. I mean, we're, we're craving some news. We got a little bit here for you. So we appreciate you joining us as always. Check out DodgerBlue.com for the latest news, Dodger Blue 1958. And of course, ring the notification bell, click subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. That's Matt Moreno. My name is Jeff Spiegel. This is Dodger Heads. We'll see you next time.